Jeffrey wants to improve his morning yeah. routine, so he watches those cringe 5 a.m. morning routine videos on YouTube. Okay, wake up, cold shower, meditate, journal, no fap, deep work. It's no use. It's too overwhelming for Jeffrey to make any progress at all. Adonis. Adonis has the most perfect morning routine. He structured his morning routine in a way that will guarantee success. There was a book by the author Tim Ferriss where he interviewed a bunch of successful, really rich people. And near the start of this book, he put like a summary. And he said that over 80% of the successful people he interviewed, these are world-class athlete CEOs, did some form of daily meditation. I read this and thought, fuck, if over 80% of people are meditating every single day, I've got to take it seriously. So I'm going to copy that. I copied it and started meditating every day and that really enabled me to become more successful because I was more capable with being focused and present. I was actually able to read after I started meditating. You know, you try and read and you have to reread the same paragraph like three times to kind of understand it. When you meditate, you literally just learn what you just read. Meditation was the first habit that I added to my morning routine and you might be sat here thinking, okay, I do meditate, but I want to get better at it. Is there a way that I can meditate and get even more benefits? And there is. I created my own follow along meditation deep breath breathing exercise. And if you follow along to that, which will pop up as a card right now, not only will you get the benefits of meditation, like present and more ability to get into a flow state, but you'll also get the health benefits of deep breathing, which regulates your nervous system, lowers your heart rate, and just makes you healthier. That's linked there. It's a 10 minute follow along, which I've created myself and you can follow it every morning. The second morning routine habit of successful people is no instant gratification. The overwhelming majority of unsuccessful people wake up and start indulging in pleasure straight away. I don't understand this. People will literally wake up and the first thing they do is grab their phone and check their notifications and go on social media and start watching porn, watch YouTube videos straight away. And then they'll go and eat some like high sugar breakfast, like cereal before doing any work, before doing anything productive. People have already indulged in more hedonistic pleasure dopamine than <laughs> all of their ancestors put together. Unsuccessful people wake up and just reward themselves first with pleasurable stuff. But successful people do the opposite. They wake up and delay any kind of pleasure for as long as possible. So when they're going to take, for example, a break from their work, to check their phone, to call someone, to check YouTube and watch a video. They do that after a couple hours of doing the third morning routine habit, which is deep work. Deep work in the morning may be the number one habit that most successful people do consistently. Deep work isn't just like normal work. It's the work tasks, which are the highest bang for your buck, which require the most from you and are like literally the hardest, most mentally demanding. And they are totally and utterly focused. Successful people wake up, choose the hardest task in their to-do list, the hardest task of the project, the hardest way to, for example, study, the hardest, most effective way. And they do that first with no distractions. It's morning time and I'm recording this video. This is the fifth video I've recorded this morning. I'm recording five more. Do you think halfway through recording this video, I would just grab my phone and start texting or start messaging people or scroll on Instagram? No, I don't have social media, bro. I don't have Instagram. I got banned. Deep work is a habit you need to build and it's where you relentlessly focus on the hardest task and you don't allow yourself to be distracted. If you do this first, thing in the morning. Over the next six months, 12 months, you will become way more successful. I have a full step-by-step -step guide on exactly how to do deep work, which I'll have linked it as a card popping up right now. That was the three morning routine habits that successful people do. The video is over. Boys, all of the Jeffries have left the video. Now we're about six and a half minutes into this video, which means that anyone with a shitty attention span, anyone who just wanted the three quick tips has already clicked, given us some ad revenue, given us like a nice view and stuff, helped the channel grow and they've like left to go watch their Andrew Tate shorts and sneak go TikToks and shit. Now only the boys remain and we can enter the unfiltered section. The unfiltered section is the later part of my videos after five, six, seven, eight minutes when all the people with low attention spans have clicked off and only the boys remain so I can speak totally unfiltered without fear of getting judged by like the normal people. You know, the modern world makes it in incredibly easy, but also somewhat painless to be unsuccessful. I'm going to say that again. The modern world makes it incredibly easy, but also somewhat painless to be unsuccessful. It's easy to be unsuccessful. We know this, right? With all the distractions, TikTok, to ease and everything, right? We know that. But it's interesting that it's somewhat not as painful as it should be to be unsuccessful. Physically, you're fine, aren't you? Physically, like a guy who's unsuccessful is, is usually fine. You can live a somewhat comfortable life being a broke slave to this like modern machine of hyper stimulant content, not living up to your potential. You can live like a comfortable life. You could have a shitty job that you hate. You could be physically even sick, but you can still be somewhat comfortable because you can just 
lie down and just scroll on your phone and just keep getting dopamine. If your life was worse and you had less of these nice to have things like your smartphone and ability to distract yourself watching four hour long Andrew Tate interviews, you would be more likely to revolt, to join a movement and to take action. You know, before I started all this, before I started this YouTube channel, I worked full time in a customer service role and I was making 17.5 thousand pounds per year. That was like my salary, 17.5 thousand. And I remember giving up that job and being able to pursue entrepreneurship only because that job was bad enough. I had a very sobering thought just recently. I thought back to that time when I was working the shitty job that I hated and you know, leaving that job caused all this that you see in front of you, caused this movement, this YouTube channel, the success that I've built, leaving that job, right? I just thought back to that moment and I something hit me and I thought, fuck. If that job was a little bit better, a little bit more comfortable, if my life was a little bit more comfortable, I would have stayed. If that job was paying me instead of 17.5K, 20, 25, 5k. I would have stayed. I would have gotten a car. You know, my family would have been a little bit more proud of me and I would have stayed. Do you realize the importance of this? I would have stayed in a shitty customer service job if it was a slightly better because my life was bad enough. I was able to revolt and change it all. And I look around at all the people who seem stuck in their position in life. And the reason why they're stuck and unable to make like drastic change, perhaps why you're stuck and unable to make drastic changes because your life is comfortable enough. Discomfort is what causes growth. And say this with me. Comfort is the killer of man. Are you being killed as we speak? How comfortable is your life? Because I guarantee the level of comfort that you're experiencing in your day-to-day -day life, lying down, watching YouTube videos, eating junk food, taking drugs, not pushing yourself, not, not challenging yourself. The level of the comfort that you experience shows us the level of mediocrity that you'll settle for. But on the other hand, the level of discomfort that you're experiencing generally will translate to the level of growth that you will experience. You're probably one of the select few guys of our entire higher generation who actually has like something about you, who is achieving some of his potential by being able to sit through and watch a video like this for like 10 minutes. Whereas everyone else has clicked off, clicking on Andrew Tate shorts. It's a sad, like very sobering thought when you think of the other men in our generation, our brothers in arms, the men that will be drafted alongside us if war breaks out in our country. <laughs> Let me say that again. The men that will be drafted alongside us if war breaks out in our country are watching porn right now. They've got 300 nanograms of testosterone testosterone five times less than what their great grandfathers did. They have no purpose, no mission, no fulfillment. That's going to be the guy next to you in war. And think about that. Think about how many guys watch this video, felt productive, and then they're not going to go and implement what they've just learned here. Why? Because it's a little bit uncomfortable. It's easier to watch a self-improvement video and be sat there like, hmm, yes. Oh yeah. These are the, the habits of successful people and get a, a sense of like completion, like dopamine, like, yes, yes, yes. That, that is the habit of successful people. Yes. And then they don't even go and take action and implement what they've just learned. Do you have the humility right now to potentially admit that you're one of them? Because I'm talking about they, they, they won't implement this video. You know, you're not one of them, are you? You know, it's great for me and you to be, oh yeah, yeah those, those guys have got poor attention spans. Those guys, uh, they're not gonna implement this advice. But how many times have you scrolled down to the comments in this video? How many times have your eyes darted across the screen like a lizard looking at like the suggested videos next to this with your shitty attention span? Even seemingly disciplined guys on self-improvement are struggling. And that makes me think that this is far greater than just us as individuals. I'm a man who is totally focused on myself because I have full control over myself. But when I see the majority of men my age or younger struggling, consistently every guy struggling, every guy, bro, if you really literally start to think how many men you know who are struggling, it's the majority of them. Perhaps it's not our individual problems that's to blame. Perhaps there's some fucky shit going on, bro, to put it lightly. Everything around us, this modern world has made it so incredibly easy to be weak and we have to try try our best to stay vigilant away from that. You know what's required of you to improve and to create good life. Everything comes down to delaying gratification, sacrificing some pleasure and comfort today to causing more growth for your future self. You may hear that and think to yourself, okay, well, that doesn't really help me. It's gonna be too hard. I don't really know exactly what to do. I know what to do, but I don't really do it. Interestingly, you only experience these problems if you're on the right path. So whilst it's not great, it's not nice to feel confused and you know to be sat here thinking like, shit, you know, I really wanna take action and stuff. Like I'm not too sure what to do. It's not a nice feeling, but it shows you're on the right path because there's like a transition period you have to go through. And when you stay true to this course, those thoughts start to go away and you start realizing what to do and exactly how how to do it. And you can't help but look back and just see the younger version of you who sacrificed and went through discomfort for your growth. And that's a beautiful thing to experience. Click and watch this video right now. Do the hard work, especially when you don't feel like it. Mwah.